Hi, I'm here at College Heights Baptist Church. This is the church where Melanie and I have joined Sunday afternoon. And I'm coming up here to set free. Set free, I'll have Jim explain it more. He's the pastor and that's overseeing it. Jim is also the guy that um, does Arctic Barnabas. He's in charge of Arctic Barnabas that I'm volunteering with. So I'm coming here tonight, and I know I don't really look like I'm dressed for church, but I've got a pistol, so I've got to kind of keep it concealed. And I'll have Jim explain what set free is, but all I'm doing is um, security, but I don't want to stand out. I don't want to look like a cop. Thanks. Tell me a little bit about set free. Hey, set free is right here on the Kenai Peninsula in Kenai, Alaska. We hope to have a set free church launch in the next couple of years in Seward, Alaska, in Homer, Alaska, out in the valley the other side of Anchorage, and in uh, the largest urban center we have in Alaska and Anchorage as well. Set Free is a little different kind of a church. It's a church that targets at-risk people, higher risk kinds of folks, uh, people who struggle with addiction, people who have been detached from church, uh, people who uh, aren't interested in church, but if your theology is like mine, you believe that God pursues lost people. I know he pursued me. I was a 23-year-old alcoholic biker uh, 36 years ago and had never heard the gospel. And then now in hindsight, I see how God pursued me and woke me up to the gospel in order to come to him. So we're looking for that person that might not want to come to a traditional kind of a church, the mainstream church with a, you know, a cross or uh, something on the top of it or uh, something that says church on the sign although we are meeting right now at a church but we're <laughs> meeting on sunday night and we're meeting in a fellowship hall around tables music's a little different it's still gospel centered and we're not really changing anything about church in the sense of god uh, saving folks and folks coming to christ we're just trying to make something relevant for broken people to come to jesus a step at a time and so Set Free is one of those kind of churches that probably is not necessarily your mama's church, uh, but your mama would love it if she came. <laughs> yeah, she would. And uh, this is kind of a church uh, where bikers might pull up or uh, folks who uh, might be serving or working some job that you and I might think wouldn't be a, a moral kind of a trade might come in because we might invite them because we do believe God pursues lost people and he pursues them in a way that gives us an opportunity to connect with them in a way that we can be a friend and show them the unconditional love of God. So basically Set Free is about reaching broken people and it is based on the values of loving God, uh, loving people, and uh, serving uh, people and planting churches. And so those four values drop down into uh, into our objectives and priorities. Uh, if they want to follow you, are you on Facebook? We are on Facebook. Uh, we're a few weeks away from having up a website, okay. a Set Free Alaska website. And uh, we'd love to have uh, folks come up and partner with us. You know, we hope to have our own facility in the fall sometime. Okay. And uh, we need people to partner with us in lots of different ways, especially prayer. And uh, this is uh, third or fourth um, kind of a recovery model church that I've helped over the years to, uh, to plant. And I'm glad to do that just as a lay pastor out of my own church here at College Heights. So I'm one of those guys that just uh, has been doing ministry a long time and leading organizations. And uh, I'm doing this for free. I don't collect any money uh, from my church to do this. Yep. And I'm doing it so that we can see people who typically would not come through the front door of a typical church come to Jesus Christ. All right, well, let's get in there and worship God. Amen. Come and join us. Um, and for those that are with us on Facebook, we say thank you for joining us there as well. Now, have you ever struggled with an addiction yourself? Or... So we pour out our praise to you all.
church in Indiana, uh, Easter week of Easter, we were uh, talking in, in our larger staff meeting with our staff about uh, what we're going to put on our sign. And thousands of cars went by our church every day. And, and I can remember getting myself in trouble because I came up with the brilliant idea that this should be on our sign at Easter. You ready for it? Here it is. The Easter bunny is dead, but Jesus is alive. Can you believe that? Yeah, you remember that? Abby, you were, Abby's my daughter playing the keyboard and singing over here with Cat and Joe. You remember that, Abby? You were just a little girl. Yeah. I remember uh, staff coming into my office one at a time like, Preacher, are you sure you want to put that on the sign? And I'm like, well, yeah, it's true. Man, the Easter bunny's dead. And Jesus is alive. And see, on Facebook right now, you're scrambling. Well, oh, I can't let my kids hear this. Right? And uh, 30 minutes after that sign was up, we had people calling our church, driving by. What do you mean putting that sign up? The Easter Bunny's dead. I'm like, well, what about the other part? Because there is no Easter Bunny. But there is a Jesus, and he is alive. <laughs> he is risen. Here it is, Easter season, and people were concerned about a dead Easter Bunny. I don't know. I don't know what the world's coming to. But I'm glad.